Bishop's parent to speak to us today. Uh, she would tell us what the organization is all about and and, uh, and give us her own presentation. What we want to know is uh, maybe just as introducing this group. Uh, I think I sent you that in an email. But we we see ourselves just as a coalition. Um, they can interested in refugee and immigrant matters and uh, and what we what we do here is we come here we share ideas we know what each person is doing and by so doing we don't replicate what people are doing but if you know someone else who is doing something and you have a problem that you cannot resolve you can easily re um, send a reference to someone else and say i think that this person is going to resolve your problem better but also it gives us a strength terms that we all understand what each and every person is doing. So um, we come here and meet every month so that we can share ideas. And um, over the past five months, I think, we have been having people come to present on what they are doing so that by that way we understand organizations that exist within the community and what each organization is doing and, and help us to coordinate and each other better. And, um, We'll, then we also decided that we're going to start recording, which Ed does for us at every meeting, so that we can put it on our YouTube page and have people go in there and know the kind of things that we do here. And for those who are not here, they'll also be able to listen to you on that YouTube page. Uh, that was a long introduction. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for coming today, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Uh, I'm grateful for the work you do for our communities. Uh, my name is Aaron, and I'm a part of a relatively new group, Freedom for Immigrants, Eastern Isle. Uh, we're working to get the word out to our leaders and representatives that we care about what's happening at our borders in Iowa and also in parts, other parts of the world. We want to be clear that immigration detention the actions of immigration enforcement, ICE, and family separation are not acceptable, not here, not anywhere. We're affiliated with the national organization, Freedom for Immigrants, based in California. As a part of that group, our aim is to abolish immigration detention entirely and to end the isolation of people suffering, two-thirds of them in profit-driven, private-owned prisons. With all of that that is happening on our southern border, and you all know, it's hard to believe that as recently as the 1980s, there were fewer than 30 immigrants held in detention each day. Only 30. And by 2018, over 45,000 children and adults were being held in jails and prisons and makeshift camps on any given day. It's more now. The United States, however, still has the largest immigration detention system in the world. The largest in the world. Before we educated ourselves, some of us found it hard to believe that about half of immigrant detainees can be held indefinitely, that in some circumstances, ICE <clears throat> is allowed to deport lawful permanent residents, green card holders, and U.S. veterans and is permitted to detain survivors of persecution immediately when they seek asylum. That the president has threatened to deport families of active duty service members. We find, found it hard to believe and entirely unacceptable that immigrant detainees do not have a right to a free phone call or access to a court appointed attorney or a speedy trial. For those reasons and others, a group from Iowa City formed the Eastern Iowa Bond Project, a group you're probably familiar with, which has been very successful. We know that when we're able to bond immigrants out of detention, about 78% are able to return to their families and communities to advocate for themselves, to access legal services, and to remain in the U.S. It was the Bond Project that first uh, formed a pilot visitation program about a year ago, and that's where I got involved. The purpose of the visit program was straightforward and important, I think. First, to end isolation, to identify who was being held, and to let family members know. 
to assess needs and provide support, to secure legal assistance when possible, and to help with simple things like funds for phone calls, which are very expensive, and for the commissary in order to supplement nutrition. So I participated in the pilot program. We visited detainees in Eldora at the Hardin <coughs> County Jail because that's one of the largest immigrant, faci immigrant facilities in Eastern Iowa. There are five in our state. There were about between 70 and 100 detainees being held in Hardin County at that time. We arranged the program through an informal agreement with the Sheriff's Department. And I kind of knew when we visited for the first time that it looked like the small town of Eldora had a pretty good size, brand new jail. I'm guessing with federal funding from Homeland Security and Immigration Enforcement. It got my attention. Because I'm not fluent in another language, I visited primarily with young people in their late 20s and early 30s who spoke excellent English. They had come to Iowa with, with their families when they were very young and had grown up here. After living in Iowa for 20 years or more, they faced deportation to countries they knew little or nothing about. Many of the young people I spoke with had compelling arguments for asylum. It seemed clear to me that their lives might be in danger if they returned. None had legal representation at the time of our visit. I saw each several times and corresponded with them. Of those I visited, several had final deportation orders. I'm sorry to say I've lost track of contact with those friends. I'm afraid they have been deported. Our pilot program was shut down by the Hardin County Sheriff's Department about a week before the ice raid in Mount Pleasant a year ago. I don't believe that was a coincidence. So this spring, a group of us, allies at the Center for Worker Justice, are working to get the visit program started again, and as I mentioned earlier, have decided to affiliate with the national group, Freedom for Immigrants. We subscribe to their core values and primary purpose. They have many resources, which they freely share, and we feel hopeful. They advocate for policy changes and changes in the law. They document and challenge abuses. They have a network of visit groups operating in 55 prisons and jails in 23 states with over 4,000 volunteers. Their national immigration hotline is free and available to people in detention and their families. They've <coughs> developed community alternatives to detention and through partnerships with several groups have created a rich archive of immigrant stories. We're just getting organized as an affiliate group and there's a lot to do. Developing thoughtful training programs and securing more legal assistance. We approached ICE with a formal application to visit with detainees. We hope to offer groups and activities as they do in California in addition to one-to-one -to -one visits. ICE hasn't yet responded to our repeated requests, but we'll keep at it. In the meantime, we plan to resume informal visits, and we'll see how that goes. We welcome everyone to join us by visiting folks in detention or supporting our program in other way ways. And I'd like to read from a pamphlet that talks about membership in the organization. Join us. Freedom for Immigrants is devoted to abolishing our private-driven U.S. Immigration, immigration Detention Center while directly supporting people on the inside. To be a member is to identify with our mission and to affirm one's own humanity. This membership card serves as a reminder that you are not alone in your struggle for freedom and justice. You are part of a solidarity network of people who care deeply for your well-being. Together, we'll end immigration detention. I wonder, does anybody have questions for me? I have, I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I do have some brochures and, and flyers with our, has our contact information. 
we have 10 minutes for questions and comments. Sure. So how, how is this related to the volunteer program? Because I know that they raise money for bonds, so it, right. you must be very closely affiliated, and is it kind of, or not? <laughs> We are, and they are the ones who started uh, the visit program, <clears throat> and also assisted with an attorney who would, um, when we gathered information, would take a look at cases and um, determine whether or not there was a possibility that people were bond eligible, uh, and then at that point tried to Got the Eastern Island bond project to bond them out and <clears throat> to find legal assistance. So we will remain yeah, close to the bond project. My question is: Yes, when you're doing your work, do you do you get threats? Do you get threats? Um, no, um, no, not at all. Uh, we we arranged this informally, and um, the receptionist at the jail is very helpful, um, and people seem glad to see us. Um, there's there's not a lot to do in detention, so no, it was good. It was good. Thank you. What do you do with the language barriers mm -hmm. and cultural barriers? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, we do trainings. Um, we have a number of people who are fluent in Spanish. <clears throat> We're trying to enlist more people who are fluent in other languages. But we did find that many of the people we spoke with um, primarily were Spanish speakers or um, spoke English well. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, the people I spoke with have been living here a long time and gone through our school system, so there was <clears throat> room for visiting with people who spoke English as well as other language. I would be nice especially to have <clears throat> people who speak French and definitely other languages as well in the group. Thank you. I'll keep going. Do you, what kind of um, countries of origin, I guess, are you seeing in Iowa in the in immigration detention? Well, it looked to me when we were visiting um, about two thirds of immigrant detainees were Latinas and African, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> some uh, East Asian, <clears throat> some in origin. <clears throat> so for the membership, is it just you basically sign on to say we, you know, we subscribe to this mission, we endorse this, or is there a fee, or is it, you know, because it, I didn't know if it was like a fundraiser <laughs> to help. <clears throat> Actually, there was a wonderful fundraiser recently. It was called Yoga for Free Yoga for Freedom. Oh. On July fourth, uh, somebody who teaches yoga was just really feeling upset about the situation, particularly on the southern border, and she uh, on July fourth did. Uh, a morning of yoga, and um, with with those funds, we'll um, we'll put that right to telephone and uh, commissary privileges. <clears throat> so, uh, but no uh, membership is free, and uh, we subscribe to the core values. So uh, we we agreed to that, no problem. Well, and I think the thing that. I am troubled by is that the average citizen 
down the street and has no idea mm. about this, you know, and so, you know, what is there as a, a, a campaign to educate people on how poorly we're treating people and how, I mean, mm. I would like to think as a community that this mm. is not part of our core values to treat other human beings like this, right. but, you know, people have to know about it to be able to well, interesting that you mentioned that. Um, we've been getting more invitations to, to visit with people. Yeah. Um, I appreciate this today. I think yeah. I think you all are very aware of the situation. Um, I've been to a couple churches. Yeah. Um, so, well, well, I think that's probably going to become more a fabric of, of the group. Right. Thank you. In terms of the legal aspects, do you have lawyers that will deal especially with, uh, there are people in detention who obviously may not have the funds to hire a lawyer? Right. So the, the first... Legal yeah, um, it looks like the university will be um, having an even stronger immigration clinic. There's some new people coming to it. We're excited about that. Um, we were work, working with one lawyer, local lawyer in particular, um, who has a lot of experience in immigration, but of course he can't do it alone. So that is one thing that we will be expanding. We'll need to do some fundraisers because we want this to be sustainable. And bonding people out is one thing, but people really need the legal help, and I, I think we're going to have to work on some big fundraisers there's only so much work one lawyer can do, so. Sure. Sure. So yeah, we'd love to have our own. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, and Thank to you. piggyback on that, especially because right now, they have cut funding that aids immigration lawyers to mm -hmm. serve your clientele, who already have no funding, have no funding, and now funding has also been cut. So that fundraiser will even have to be bigger. Right. Yeah. Right. So getting word out there. It's it's daunting, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm surprised that there are five detention sites in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's Eldora. Where else do we have detention sites? Uh, Eldora, Marshalltown. The Sioux City area, um, sometimes Omaha is in Iowa and sometimes it's not. Um, those are the big ones that I can think of at the moment. Uh, people stay for shorter times in the Lynn County Jail, uh, in Muscatine, before they're moved to longer term detention. In Eastern Iowa, Marshalltown and Eldora are the big the centers. to go to Omaha usually to pay bond. Yeah. That seems, so wherever, that seems wherever crazy. Wherever the person is detained, you right. have to go to Omaha to pay the bond. Right. Is that to the office, to the immigration? Yeah. Um, immigration, of course. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then to Chicago for a passport is what I've heard. Right. 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 Lots of travel. Yeah. yeah. No, like that's accessible. Yeah. <laughs> People need support to get to those places. Well, thank you for this really important thank you so work. Much. It's um, it's been troubling. It's amazing how much information within a very short period of time that I did not know. Seriously, and I think it's <coughs> so important, and that is why I think a forum like this is so important for us to just be able to come together um, about. I think about 10 years ago, my son was on a deportation procedure. Um, it, it's, it's just amazing how somebody feels. I mean, I was a student. <laughs> I brought him here when he was very young, graduated from college, and 
after he graduated, didn't find a job immediately, and immediately he was in procedure. But uh, it's amazing how that feels that today, you know, he has just passed his citizenship interview to become a citizen of the United wow. States. And for, for yeah. our family, that is that is just a very, very big change. It's um, the the kind of the kind of fear and psychological stress that people go through families generally when these kind of things happen. So to, to just be able to know the kind of statistics and the things that are really happening and what some of you are doing, it's, it's um, uh, I mean, it's gladdening to know that there are people who are really very concerned that. And I think a large, almost all of us in this group are really concerned about things like that, uh, including very much concerned also about people who are already either citizens or legally here and have the, the problem of having to settle in this culture. And, and most of the people here provide all the services that help people to settle down. Uh, and I, I promise you that on behalf of everyone here that you know, we sincerely identify with almost everything that uh, you're doing. And um, um, we hope that you know, we still have more opportunities for you to come and present and also to just have feedback on some of the things you're doing. And uh, whenever you have anything, uh, we'll give you an email address that you can send and oh, then you. the whole group will know. Great. And it's a larger, it's a much, much larger group than this. So the whole group will be able to attend the activities and uh, people who have resources to, to help in the fundraising as you're talking about. But we sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you so much for having me, yeah. and um, thank you for what you all do. Thanks. To piggyback on those three comments, one piece that gets forgotten, uh, or maybe we are not those of us who uh, work with immigrants and populations. When I started.